Hey, this is RJ, and welcome to another 6-Minute Salesforce. Today, we're going to talk about the Developer Console inside of Chrome. So, if you don't have Chrome, I suggest you go download it. Basically, that's everything that we're going to be working in today. Um, we're going to look a little bit at some Visual Force code and some static resources, but just only a teeny tiny bit. We're really, really, really going to be trying to work more in the Developer Console so that you guys get a little bit more acclimated to working outside of Salesforce. Even though Salesforce is a great tool, it's a little bit easier to debug outside of Salesforce sometimes, especially when you're working with things like static resources. So let's jump right in. I'm assuming everyone has at least a base knowledge of JavaScript and a base knowledge of how Visual Force pages work. Um, I've set up a networking test, and this it's not necessary that you know how the networking calls work. But basically what we're going to do is we're just going to watch a network call happen. It's going to call to another page. It's going to try to get some information from that page. It's going to get a response. And then it's going to display that on the page in front of us all with a button click. So I've already set up a Visual Force page for that. We're going to go look at it right here, networking test, right? And if you see right here, this is where the response uh, will be displayed. And right here, this is our... Ajax request to API button. So it's going to make the request when we click that button. So the important thing here is how do you get to the developer console? There's a couple different ways that you can do it. Number one, if you're on a PC or a Linux box, you can hit the F12 button. That's going to get you to the developer console. And I'll show you guys the hotkey on a Mac in a second. But it's going to open up in pretty much the exact same way on all three. PC, Mac, and Linux. So don't worry about what it's going to look like or anything like that. Now, the buttons on a Mac, the hotkeys on a Mac are Option, Command, I. And that opens up our console over here. And you can see I have the elements. That was the last thing I had selected, so it came back up that way. There's also console, which I have down here. And if you hit the escape button, you get this extra second console down here. If you don't have it, what you'll see is just this full page of, of all this, of the network or the elements or the console or the sources. What we're going to look at right now is the network, though. So here's our network. It's clear. It's clean. This is our uh, Salesforce logo that didn't work, um, and that's the standard Salesforce thing. You guys will probably see that all over the place. Don't worry about that. If this is the first time opening the console, that's always there no matter what Salesforce page you're on. Um, it's some type of security measure. I don't know enough about it to go into detail. Anyway, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this guy and we're going to look at the network traffic. So we're going to go over here and we're going to click Ajax request to API. Now I'm expecting something to happen over here and you'll notice real quick, a lot of stuff happens. Boom. So I purposefully made this the wrong URL. So it went out and I got a 404. So that means we're in trouble. And it gave me back some stuff in here, which I've console logged inside my script. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this guy and we're going to see, oh, yep, certainly, certainly I've gone to the wrong URL because I put that in there and I know that that's not the right URL. And we're going to see some stuff over here. We don't need to worry too much about the response headers. We don't really need to worry too much about the request headers. What we're really, really looking at is this, this guy right here. So we know it's a 404 and we know it's the wrong URL. So how do we go about fixing this? Well, it's difficult um, if you look in your elements. We'll scroll down here. Actually, the easiest way to get there is to right-click and inspect your button, and that's going to tell you, oh, this is the guy that gets called right here. Perform call to API when you click that button. So we're going to Control-C that, and then we're going to do a find, and we're going to find that guy. And there he is, and sure enough, it's got the wrong URL in there. Now the problem here is that I can't really change this. This is inline JavaScript, and it's not really going to let me change it. You can see right here, I've got my script type, text JavaScript. It'll let me, if I, if I edit this as HTML, which is not letting me right now. There we go. If I edit this as HTML and go down here and change this, it's not going to work for me it's still going to be broken, right? So I can click off of this, and there it is. Um, 
all nice and pretty. But if I go over here, I'm still getting that, that error. And if I look at my network console, still getting that error. So what we want to do is we want to rip that out and we want to put this into a static resource. And so in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to rip that out and put it into a static resource. And then we're going to move right along with that and debug that. And it's going to be a lot easier. So if you're trying to edit something in line here, some inline JavaScript, the important thing that you should get out of this video is it's not going to work. You're going to have a hard time with it. And this is something that you have to go back to your page and you have to actually edit. So we'll go, we'll actually go back real quick and edit that. And we'll, let's, let's see how that works. We're going to save that. And we're going to go over here. And we'll refresh this guy. Clear that out because we don't need it. And now we'll make a successful request to our API. And there it is. So I it I'll put it over here because I told it to. I told it to console log it. We've got a, a successful call over here. 200, okay. Great. And we've got our data from here. So again, important thing to note is that all this right here is difficult to debug inside of the developer console in Chrome. So like I said, next video, we're going to talk about how to do this inside of Chrome. I'll see you then.